3D movie review. So we have a bunch of some of the best cave explorers in the world and some of the worst exploring a cave. The whole lot of them are some of the worst actors I've ever seen. And I'm really not trying to use hyperbole here. It does get better once the basic range of their emotion is limited to intense and more intense, because that they do reasonably well, at least the leads, I would say. It doesn't make it any better that the characters are one-dimensional, I guess that's where two of the dimensions from the 3D come, which I guess would make it 4D. One-dimensional, flat, cliched, you know, if that was it, it actually would be kind of okay. We would be able to tolerate these characters, except it doesn't quite stop there. You see, these characters, they talk incessantly and about nothing important. I think that the release on you know, DVD and Blu-ray and whatever else really should have a feature that eliminates all the dialogue that is not essential to hear because none of it is pleasant. It's just barely tolerable. There are attempts at jokes. There are these hints at, you know, history and, ooh, these people know each other. They've been here for a long time. They have in-jokes. None of it works. It's flat. It's bland. It's boring. It isn't even a little bit memorable. I watched this in a packed theater and there was maybe one joke that kind of got a laugh. It was a shit joke. Literally. The first, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, nothing happens. Nada. The most compelling thing that happens is that we get some helicopter shot footage of nature. And that is attractive, and I'll get back to that. That is all. After that, and this isn't a spoiler, we do get to the meat of the film. They get trapped in this cave, and the rest of the film is them trying to get back out. And that is when something clicks, and it just works for the rest of the film. The rest of the film is intense pretty well throughout. It's not all the time high intensity at least, but it's a kind of low... like you do feel a certain sense of helplessness. You do worry that maybe they'll never get back out. And the tension does work, which is impressive because we don't really care about the characters. Why was Andrew from The Chasers not in this more? He was just in there for long enough to remind us that it really sucks that the war on everything is over. Anyway, the visuals are quite nice. Not as, quite, not as impactful as you would expect them to be. And the... Some of them really don't, I don't know, maybe they lack build-up. They just don't hit you the way they should. The 3D is very nice, and yes, it kind of is the Avatar 3D. I mean, I'm not really an expert as far as visual things go, but it definitely has the same effect. I couldn't tell you if it's quite as nice. I didn't, I wasn't wowed by it the way I was by Avatar, but 
the 3D is subtly used. It is not constantly reminding you. I mean, for the first couple of minutes, you notice, oh, it's like the stuff is like reaching out to me and stuff. But then you get used to it, and for the rest of the film, it just feels like you're there with them, and that works. And this is exactly the kind of film where that kind of thing helps. It explores all the basic primal fears, I would say, drowning, fear of heights, claustrophobia, fear of dying because of pressure, okay, so it's roundabout, fear of the dark, and yes, maybe most of us did stop being afraid of the dark at you know, age nine, but when you're in a cave under the ground, there's reason to be afraid of the dark. The pace is pretty good, although the big problem is when it tries for, I don't know, character moments, I guess, because these always turn, in, turn to melodrama, and it's just painful. It's like watching the days of our lives, and it just happens that it's now set underground. It's pretty clear who we should be rooting for. And yes, I did just say rooting for in a film where most of the characters speak in Australian accents. And the rest of them, you know, the people that are arguing with them, we just never quite get to liking them as much. I never realized why they needed to be down there. I mean, at one point they say, ooh, it's the hobby of the, you know, billionaire or something. Okay, that's it? Are we watching two hours of people trying to survive because a billionaire got bored? I mean, even Anaconda's Hunt for the Blood Orchid or whatever was kind of about, you know, ooh, we're trying to you know, better someone's life or something. You know, even that smart shark movie, Deep Blue Sea or whatever, was about that. You know, this, no, we just like to check out caves, that's it. The film also does something relatively early on. Again, it's in you know, it's around the 10-20 minute mark, they show you the basic structure of the cave as far as it, is, it has been explored at that point in the movie. And this is very effective. This really tells you the difficulty, the hopelessness of the situation. You never quite forget the scale of the situation just how far down they actually are. I mean, without giving away too much, they can't really get out because there's a storm. There's just water pouring down, and you just know. You know, you think back to that, and you're like, they're never going to get through that much water, you know, upwards as it's still pouring down, and they don't know any other way out. You know, it's not fully explored yet. The music is a little odd, but it works. And I suppose that's about what there is to say. The film does get pretty brutal at times. I don't remember the rating offhand, but I would guess R, and it earns it. And it's not just because they swear a bunch. There are some fairly disturbing sides in this. So yeah, if you tolerate the melodrama, the acting, and the characters, and you really want something where people are constantly in a lot of danger, and in a realistic film, largely realistic film, then I would say to at least give this a shot. 
and I would say that it is more effective in the cinema. So that was my review of Sanctum 3D. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.